Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this episode, we are finishing the CNC work with the Snapmaker. This is the final episode of the Slopes and the Curve series, and so far we have learned the relationship between the two paths and the cutting bit, how to create topography manually, how to create topography using the interpolate method, how to use gradients, and how to combine those methods to overcome their individual flaws. All the relevant videos will be linked up here. In the previous episodes, we have used the software called Inkscape to draw our topography and create our grayscale. But for this episode, we are going to depart from that and we're going to use a stereolithograph file. Stereolithograph files are 3D object files and they're created by a 3D modeling software. Now, there is plenty of software out there that can create those 3D objects and I cannot really pinpoint what you should be using. If you have used a 3D modeling software before, keep using it because you are familiar with the menus, the functions, the button clicks, the workflows, etc. If you haven't, be prepared for a steep learning curve. For the past two weeks, I have been using how to use Blender as a 3D modeling software. And let me tell you, I'm just scratching the tip of the blend. The relationship between the model and the cutting bit is quite complicated. <laughs> and let me show you with an example. Uh, when I began researching the episode, I began with two ziggurats. The normal one where everything rises towards the center. Uh, and, and we can see that this is 4 millimeters, 12 and 20 for the layers. And each layer is at 3 millimeters from the previous one, except the base, which is at 9. And the other ziggurat that I had is more of an inverted ziggurat where everything goes towards the bottom. Uh, but again, same measurements, 4, 12, and 20, and 3 millimeters for the layer height. Uh, so bringing everything together, the total height of my project is 15 millimeters. When I imported the two models into the Luban software and created a two path based on the uh, predetermined uh, two settings, I was getting quite the weird result. So for this one, we're using the flat end mill. And once I created the G code and loaded it into the workspace, I'm looking at pyramids, not uh, the ziggurat with the vertical line. So definitely we see right here the pyramid structure, and then we see the pyramid structure right here as well. Let me just pan the view a little bit. Yeah, there it is, a pyramid. Then I decided I did something wrong, so I decided to change the two, and I used the V carving bit, uh, which has a 30 degree point. So once the two paths uh, recreated, and let me do it for both. And export to the workspace. I'm beginning to see uh, a straighter lines, more vertical lines on each of the paths. And that kind of gave me the idea that the only thing that changed was the tool and the angle of the tool. So I decided to mess around and created a custom tool that has a one degree point. And I generated the two paths based on that. And once we export to the workspace and click the play button, we can see completely flat lines. The result from this experiment is that the sharper the tool angle is, the more accurate the cut would be. And there lies the problem. With a sharp angle, the software thinks that it's only a little tiny point that is doing the cutting, but our flat end mill is a much wider tool. Now, the easiest way to think about it now is imagine the edges of your model as your tool path. And we already know that the center of the tool bit is going to run along that path. I asked a question. I opened up a support ticket and asked the question as to why is this happening? Why are preset values giving us a pyramid versus imaginary one degree tools are giving us nice flat lines? And the answer that I got for now is that the Luban software only supports two compensation on the X and Y axis only, not the Z axis. And now you have two solutions. Solution number one is adjust your model to compensate for the two diameter. Solution number two 
is to use a different CAM software. And a CAM software is a software that can give you a G-code. So the Luban software is a CAM software. Um, now I'm going to link a little article from the Snapmaker site that talks about the different plugins they have for different CAM software. Now I run the code anyway, and let's take a look at it. Taking a look at the ziggurat cutouts, these top two were a case where I had one Blender file with both ziggurats in it, separated by a one centimeter gap. When I loaded the corresponding STL file to the Luban software, it didn't like it that much. And as we can see, one of the sides didn't cut properly. All the rest were a case where I had a single ziggurat in a Blender file, so every corresponding STL only had one object in it. Now you can load as many objects as you want on your cutting plane, but every object file must have a single object in it. Now let's go back to Blender. These two were a case where both were carved using the V carving bit, and we can see that the sides are somewhat straighter, but they still have some slant to them. This is the case where the same ziggurats were cut using the flat end mill, and we definitely see the pyramids. And those two were a case where I used that sharp pointy tool of a one degree angle cutting point. And in that case, all the sides are nice and vertical, but they are way outside of our dimensions. And I think one of the small pieces here, which was one millimeter square, fell off either during the cutting or when I was vacuuming the dust and debris of this uh, cutout right here. Taking a quick look at the measurements, the very bottom is two centimeters exactly, and at the very top, it is 2.27 centimeters, so we can see the slope of the V carving bit. The flat end mill, top and bottom, we see it is 2.23 centimeters, and our custom tool is again 2.27 or 2.28, so a very minor difference. Uh, our original measurements for the width is two centimeters, so we see that there is a little bit of a tool adjustment that we have to figure into our calculations. Now that we know the little limitation, can we still do a curve? And the answer is yes, of course we can. This is the curve that I made for this episode. I actually had two, and let me just do the uh, x-ray vision. Uh, this was a much deeper curve, and this is the 7mm curve that we have used previously in our examples. Uh, I didn't make it as blunt as I wanted to, but it's still good representation of a curve where we have a nice gentle slope at the front and steep at the back. So I run the G-code and let's see what we have. Let's do a comparison between the CNC cutout and our graphic. I'm going to talk about the outermost first. They are both done with a flat end mill and all of the parameters are the same except for a parameter called step over. We can see that our left path has a step over value of 1.2 millimeters while the right path has a step over value of 0.5 millimeters. And since we're talking about the step over value, let's go to the middle one, which is done with a V carving bit. And we see that the step over value here is 0.12. So the lower this value is, the more refined the results are. Now looking at the refined results, we see a pretty excellent curve, I would say. The whole slope, the, the both the front and the back, as well as the sides, there are no step patterns that we can see in our previous cases. So I would say the STL by far gives us the best overall shape. Now let's take a look at our dimensions. We are starting with a slightly different graphic. This is 5.2 centimeters by two and a half centimeters, whereas the ones we did with Inkscape were five by three. So slightly off, but still in the same range. The middle one is done with the V carving bit and the outer one is done with a flat end mill. So let's take a look at the actual measurements. This is 
5.1 ish uh, 5.09 you know so 5.1 so very minor distortion and this one is a little bit larger at 5.37 5.38 uh, and again very minor distortion and in this case the outer edges of the graphic are basically your path and the flat end mill run along that path and cut slightly outside of it so that's why we have that little larger section so that is the dimension that we have plus the diameter of the tool and let's compare everything we've seen so far the top plate represents all the methods we've seen with Inkscape and that is the manual the interpolate gradient and combination of methods and the bottom plate represents the 3D modeling methods. We can see by far the 3D modeling methods gives us the best results in terms of shape in one go. So we have the front curve, the back curve and even the sides all done accurately in one go. Also the 3D modeling methods gives us the best results in terms of smoothness that is after you adjust for the step over value they give us the best results in smoothness in one go so you don't have to go and do any sanding and of course we already know each method has its limitations so you have to pick and choose which one you want to go with and now you have another way to create slopes and curves for your CNC by far 3D modeling gives us the best results overall but you need to be aware of that little limitation we discussed earlier in the video and with this, we bring a conclusion to the Slops and Curves series. Next video, we'll be back in the workshop with more exciting projects. If you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe, and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also, follow me on all social media channels, and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.